So in today's video, we are going to have a look at uh, this thing. It's a gasoline-powered generator. Now, a uh, story behind this, uh, a couple of months ago when we uh, moved into our new house, uh, this was one of the purchases we made. Uh, of course, it is second-hand. We got it for a fairly decent price. Uh, not sure what brand it is. It's got a model number, FPG 6500CXS. Um, it does start, it does run, although <clears throat> I'm not sure... Uh, when last it was serviced and I did notice there was actually a loose nut inside like sort of the generator section uh, when I was running it last time. So I think what we need to do today is have a look at this, see if we can give it a basic service, um, see what is wrong inside, why there's just a loose nut floating around. Uh, hopefully it's nothing too bad and um, see if we can get it running because uh, at the moment we are having quite a number of power cuts and yeah. It's been a little bit uh, challenging, especially since our water is pumped. Uh, uses an electric, uh, normal electric pump out of, and tanks. And of course, when there's no electricity, then there's no water. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Bird and Builds Garage. So first up, let's just see if it's got compression. And yep, it does feel like it's got a bit of compression, which is good. Uh, the choke, I think, yeah, we'll choke it there. Oh, we won't use the pull start. It does have electric start, so hopefully that still works. Fuel, and we'll pop the fuel on. Um, air cleaner, oh, sure, that's fine. Not sure how much fuel is in the tank. Uh, you can't really see it there, but that's showing empty. We'll just pretend that there's some fuel in the tank. I'm sure that'll be fine. Turn it on. This uh, oil, we should be checking the oil. That's checked, that's fine. Um, battery, you know, this thing is not exactly the heart of, well, she's the heart of safety. But um, anyway, we'll just, I suppose, leave it there. It's got wheels, but I don't think it's gonna be running away. Circuit breaker's off, and I reckon we are ready to try and start. Okay, so it definitely sounds like it works. Oh, I forgot to look at that, but I did see the needle was up at around the 220 volt mark. You can't really see it there, behind that super transparent piece of plastic. Um, I don't want to run it too long because then it's going to get hot and then we're in a battle to work on it. Looks like I'm a little bit overexposed here. Good going there, Grant. Uh, but anyway, it does start, it does run. Let's get it into the workshop and see if we can get this thing serviced. So I also forgot to mention that it's got two different wheels. I had to scrounge out a wheel out of the old storeroom uh, because one of the wheels was flat. Well, basically the tires perished and this is the new one that I just threw on you quickly. It rubs on the frame, of course, that's always what we want. But anyway, um, let's get it apart and uh, I'm pretty keen to get this thing running hopefully by tonight because there are expected power cuts once again. Thank you to our wonderful electricity supplier. By the way, when taking batteries loose, uh, always a good idea to take the negative terminal off first, just in case while you're taking the positive off, you short circuit something onto the frame and then it doesn't spark and you don't get a bit of a fright and burn down your house. Feels like it's still got a little bit of fuel in it. Not a lot, maybe, I don't know, maybe five liters. Oh, there you are, <laughs> maybe five liters. Yeah, not too bad. So it's looking a little bit rusty. Now, this is probably just surface rust, so not too bad. It's kind of to be expected because it was standing outside, but I can really see the first problem. Our little valve cover breather is out of the valve cover. So obviously that's been sucking a little bit of air and stuff in there. Hopefully it's not looking Hopefully it's not looking too dirty. We might have to just take it off and have a look inside. So this is the little breather section of where the motor, the gasoline part of the motor joins onto the generator. 
And if you can just hook your peepers a little bit in there, just behind that grate, there is a loose nut. Now, I realize it is a little bit difficult to see. That thing was bouncing around, so not too sure where it came from. It must have come up somewhere. And uh, that's the reason why I want to take this thing apart and have a look. Uh, a little bit worried about where it came from. Spark plug is looking pretty damn good. Um, now, of course, the right thing to do is to get the feeler gauge out, check the spark plug gap before you put it back in. So, of course, we're just going to put it straight back in and hope for the best. So this is where the breather is sticking out of this little cover here. So I reckon what we do is we just give this a bit of a wipe, pull it off, check the inside that it is all clear, and then we'll pop it back on, stick that pipe back in, and we'll be good to go. Gonna try and be a little bit careful here so as not to break this rubber gasket. Okay, not looking too bad, thankfully. Yeah, I reckon there's actually nothing to clean in here. We'll just uh, wipe off this little bit of the gasket, maybe give that area a wipe, um, and then we'll pop the pipe back on. Now, also, while you're in here, you might as well check the valve clearances. I've got no idea what they should be on this motor, so we're just going to put the cover back on and hope for the best. On second thought, I think we must go and try and fish out what the valve clearances should be for this motor. Reason being, uh, there is a little bit of play here. I don't think it's uh, too excessive. I mean, you, you can drive a bus through that gap, but yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, I think it's not supposed to be that loose. So I had a quick look on the interweb of things and I couldn't find anything for this engine. So what I went ahead and did is I searched on uh, Honda's website. I found some information there on how big um, the valve clearances should be for uh, these types of engines. Now I'm, I'm guessing this is a Honda clone because it looks basically exactly the same just without any badging on. And look, if I can remember correctly now, the intakes should be 0.15 millimeters and the exhaust should be 0.2 millimeters plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. Don't take my word on that, go and check it up for yourself. And these are looking fairly big. So this feeler gauge is point, um, I think it's about point, no, yeah, not about, it is 0.3 millimeters and it's fitting in there quite loosely. Um, the intake, let's just bring that around. And if we have a look at the intake, uh, I've got a 0.4 and a 0.3 feeler gauge out there. And if we just slightly put it, in, there we go. And those fit in there. So we are 0.1 oversize here. And like, what would that be? 0.55 oversize on the intake. That is way out. So definitely glad I checked that. Okay, there we go, 0.15 millimeters and 
there's just a slight bit of friction, the very slightest of friction between the valve and the rocker. Come to think about it now, uh, I did have to take the spark plug out again to find a top dead center. So figured since these valves were so far out that I'll just check the spark plug gap. Now it's supposed to be between 0 0.7 and 0.8 millimeters. Here's a 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 and checking it out. There we go. Fits in there. Just slides through the gap. So that spark plug uh, is set pretty damn accurately. Um, it does look like it's running a little bit rich, but remember when we started it initially, I ran it for a few seconds and then shut it off, so I'm guessing that's why it was running rich, because it was running with a choke on. After putting the spark plug in, while I was working in this area, we can see here that the exhaust is leaking slightly because of those black marks. So probably also going to whip this off, uh, put some new uh, fire gum or exhaust sealer on there and then pop that back on. Interesting, that nut is missing. I see this little nut in here is also missing. Cool, so I ended up uh, pretty much cleaning all of this out, so taking these plastics and washing them off. Also washing the sponge filter out, I still need to, that's busy drying outside, I still need to put some uh, oil on that filter, but that's not going to be too difficult. And we'll whip this back together, put the cover back on, and then I reckon we are one step closer to running again. So what we're doing is dribbling a small amount of oil onto the sponge and then squeezing it to make sure that the sponge is completely saturated with oil. Not so much that it's going to be squeezing and dripping out, but just enough to make it nice and damp with oil. And that's, that oil is going to catch any of the fine dust particles uh, that uh, might travel into the engine. These things are looking pretty damn rusted. 
Yes, see, I was worried that that was going to break off. But this one seems to be coming out, well, it's, it's not so fairly easily, but it's, at least it's loose. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. I wonder why it was leaking, man. It's such a pity. I didn't really want to have to take this off. There we go, that's number one. Um, looks like this size is number 12. And, oh, well, that's probably why it was leaking because this bolt is completely loose. So, I don't know, I suppose over time, you know, with it running so many hours and a lot of vibration, it's worked itself loose. But good thing we're actually looking at it now. So hook your face balls closely in here. Now this is the exhaust flange that we just took off here. Uh, this goes into the engine and this is the exhaust box of the muffler. And you can see this sort of black carbon here, this black carbon deposit and there's also a bit of a spray, a black carbon deposit over there. So this exhaust has clearly been leaking. That is a clear indication just in case you can't hear it actually. Now, it's quite a noisy machine. I didn't really hear it. Although I had my suspicion, I could just hear that little bit of a puff out the exhaust that it didn't sound like it was coming or traveling through the, through the muffler. So um, pretty happy that I ended up taking this off. Now, the, the actual box is a little bit rusty. I do need to paint this. So what I think we will do is service this whole thing, put it back together. We'll run it for a couple of hours and then possibly remove the exhaust again and spend time repainting it. Having a look at the exhaust flange where it comes out of the head and into this short exhaust extender piece here, I don't see any black marks or any leaking, indication of leaking uh, on the head itself. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty happy to leave this piece on here. I don't think we need to touch that at all. So while I was sitting staring into space, uh, I thought, you know, while this thing is apart, let me wire brush the exhaust, the muffler, um, all of that surface rust that was on there. This is definitely something that we don't want to rust through. It is a little bit more difficult to repair than basically anything else on there that just needs basic welding. So wire brushed it, uh, washed it off with some deoxidine, which is basically phosphoric acid, just to kill a bit of the rust. Um, wiped it off then with some acetone and put some high heat. This is Durham NS10. Hopefully this lasts for a little bit. It's got a first coat on. We'll put a second coat on shortly. Uh, also scraped up the shroud for the exhaust and um, put some high heat on the bits that were rusting. Of course, I removed all the rust. Haven't done that yet. I'll probably do that another day. That's the battery box. Um, while we are waiting for the paint to dry here, it dries very quickly. It's, it's this matte type of black. I was also having a look around and I've noticed, wonderful, that one of the engine mounts is also broken. So here it is over here. There's two of them. There's one over here. And there is one hiding in the shadows down there. So just got to take those two loose. And then hopefully we'll kind of just lift the back of the generator up. And then whip this one out, uh, drill it out, put a new bolt in, put a little bit of a rubber gasket uh, or thick rubber wash on the top here, bolt it back down, and it'll be good to go as a temporary measure. I say temporary, this is probably gonna be temporary, one of those couple of month temporary things. So it turns out there was thread in the top of this engine mounting, uh, which is quite handy. So just got another bolt, we'll slot it back in, tighten it up, and I think that'll take care of that problem at least for a couple of months. So there's the nut that I was talking about, little, looks like a five millimeter nut, so not exactly sure where that comes from. I'll have to see if we can have a look inside here without actually taking it apart any further. 
Yeah, I don't know. If you guys have got any ideas, let us know in the comments and, uh, you know, maybe that'll help me out. So I can't really find anywhere else by looking in that little fan section. So I suppose the only other option must be from inside here. Now, I th clearly think somebody has been in here before because this definitely is not standard. <laughs> These little blue sort of machine screws with a nut on the end. I mean, normally there would be a washer or something. So what are we gonna find in here? I'm actually a little bit worried. Hmm. Looks a bit crusty, but all the wiring's there. Nothing looks like it's melted. Aha, uh -huh. I think I can see where that little nut came from. So get your face balls a little bit closer in on this one. This is the wires or, you know, these are the sort of terminal blocks that go into um, the coils on the motor or on the windings there. I see all of them have got two nuts. I mean, these are the same size nut, little five millimeter nut. There's a nut, some washers and another nut. Same here, nuts and washers, another nut, obviously in two lugs. And this one has just got one nut all the way on the inside. And it looks like it's got a bit of a sort of brown marking on the thread and then a nice clean bit of silver thread about the thickness of the nut. So I am going to say that this nut sort of vibrated itself loose and fell down, made its way towards that fan. I'm guessing what happens is that fan actually flings out the air and it creates a bit of a suction through this way. So maybe the nut was light enough and it made its way all the way down there. I'm pretty certain that's where it came from. A little bit that worries me though is where are the two washers? If we look at the bottom one here, this one's got two washers. I wonder if there were two washers and if they are somewhere in here. Now, of course, the right thing to do again is to strip it and have a look, make sure that it's that they're not stuck anywhere. So I guess we're just gonna turn the nut on, close it up, and then pretend that we didn't see anything. I mean that's uh, that's how the Garage Hack Society do things. You guys know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm, yep, all looks pretty good. So we've bolted it all up, now I'm going to wait for this fire gum to dry overnight because that's what the recommendations say. So we'll leave this and get everything else back together. And the last thing we're going to check tonight is the fuel screen. Now I'm basically just unscrewing the uh, petcock or fuel shut off valve and the little screen. You'll find that um, inside the tank but it's attached to the valve. So this one looks pretty clean and we'll just Screw it back in and now we are pretty much done for the evening, I reckon. I just gotta wait for the exhaust stuff to dry. Um, I'm not gonna run it now because it's getting quite late and then we'll pick the rest of the uh, repair and service up in the morning. So here's the deal, I got everything buttoned up, uh, put together last night. Uh, didn't want to run it last night because it was quite late. Obviously things are quite noisy. Uh, so the last thing we need to do is to change the oil. Now, we need to run it a little bit before uh, we change the oil so that we can sort of heat the oil up, it gets nice and thin, runs out quickly, and then we can put some new oil in and then give it a test. 
Also, we've got 30 minutes and the power is scheduled to go out again for another, I think, two or two and a half hours. So we really need to get this thing going so that I can test it, see if it works, and then we've got at least some power for, <laughs> for two hours. Also managed to repair the um, battery box here. I just put a small piece of wood in the bottom and a little bit of an aluminium plate with a turn-up on it, so now it's bolted fairly tight, although it didn't really work too well. No, there we go. It's bolted fairly tight. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the oil, uh, I'm sure there's enough oil in there. We'll check it later anyway. Not too worried. In a rush. <laughs> Uh, circuit breaker is off. I suppose we need to turn the fuel on and the choke obviously Yeah, fuels on chokes on I hope it's gonna start. Let me just turn it over just to check that we're not hitting any valves uh, From you know resetting those valve clearances Here we go Oh, like it Not working yeah. Wonder Wonder why. Hmm. Something's up. Shit. I wonder if I didn't bump away off a starter motor or something hmm. Aha, there we go not exactly sure what happened but uh, anyway it's running no. and it's uh, it's definitely a lot quieter than it was so that exhaust was most definitely leaking uh, no leaking over there, you can't really see, but definitely leaking inside there. Oh, that is tight. Okay, no worries, we'll try the other side. Luckily these two drain plugs, oh yeah, this one is a lot looser. Maybe the oil has been changed on this one before. The oil looks, I actually don't know what to make of it. <laughs> it's not clear, it's not black, it's brown. It's not really going to work. And there we go. Just like that. The power is out. So, almost done. Oh, great. Now I can't see the oil pouring, but anyway, we'll just pour until it comes out. I'm sure that'll be okay. Yeah, I can pretty much see it at the threads there now. Kind of looks like the picture shows. I'm sure that'll be fine. Put in some fresh oil, chucked in some new fuel. Well, not actually new fuel, it's probably a year old or so. But uh, nevertheless, I'm sure it'll be fine. Fuel is on, that circuit breaker is off, and let's give this a go. Oh yeah, we've also got a little bit of a test light here. And it's connected on a really short lead, just standing on the ground. Uh, that's plugged into the AC. Before we plug this into um, plug this into the house to power up stuff, I just want to test it on one light first. Hmm. Wonderful. I wonder why we're having so many problems. This is um, really awesome. Maybe turn it off. 
Hmm, I must have disturbed some wiring or some potential break or something down here, I would imagine. So he has our changeover switch. We've got the mains power on this side. Of course, you can see there's no power. And the Jenny now, I've turned that on, showing power, yeah? So after I've turned this on, hopefully, I've never done this before, actually. It's gonna be first time for you and for me. First time's always fun. Um, hopefully the light is going to turn on and the generator will take up the load. Not sure if you're gonna hear it from here. And everything should be good. There we go. Didn't sound like the generator took up most or much load, but anyway, the, the light is on. So, pretty stoked about that. Um, let's see if we can go boil the kettle. Here we go, toaster's on, so that's working. That is awesome, here's the kettle. And the kettle is working. Also heard the generator load up a little bit there, so um, obviously this is what, this is probably one and a half kilowatts, maybe one kilowatt on a 5.5 kilowatt generator, so. Not exactly full load, but um, it is showing that it is working and we'll be able to have a cup of tea. Well, not tea actually, rather, rather a cup of coffee. Nobody likes tea. Isn't that the best cup of coffee you just ever didn't have? So I'd say the service and repair turned out pretty damn well. Now, I do still wanna run this under load for a couple of hours to see that it uh, does work as it's intended to work. I'm pretty sure it'll be just fine. Also, give the video a like if you wanna see me work on this again. There is still another issue. We need to check out the wiring starting thing. I'm not too sure what's happening there. Uh, also, there's something about the service that I didn't check. It's not too important, uh, but it's, it's one of the things that we didn't check. It's got to do with the coils. Um, and then also, you know, it, it's got a bit of rust on it, so maybe we want to tear it down again, and then in you know a couple of weeks, couple of months' time, uh, put a new lick of paint on so that it continues to work and run for the next couple of years. You've always got to look after the things that you've got. And before you guys go, what do you think of hey, hey my little tractor? This is an old Victor 1042, a little garden tractor, ride on lawnmower, whatever you want to call it. I think it's roughly a 75 model. So she's pretty old, um, but I think everything is here and um, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do with it, but you don't want to miss out. I must say that every time I walk into the garage, uh, I get that little tingly feeling. I can't wait to start working on it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss out. Uh, my name is Grant Burton. This is the Burton Builds Garage and you'll see me next time. Cheers.